Everybody hear me okay? At the back, can you hear me? Up a bit, okay. Let's try that. Is that better? better. Looks like I'll have to move around a bit. Um, where do we start? Um, all I've got in front of me is a load of papers to remind you about things. Um, uh, it's really off the cuff. It's the first time I've come out with this, what I believe to be true. Um, and it's really a journey of my experiences and knowledge gained through those experiences. It all started off with me in this wake up process back in 2006 when I borrowed a van off my friend to move some bedding to Chester. He had trade insurance, I didn't have trade insurance, but I had the old fully, fully called insurance. Mm. He thought I was insured with mine and I thought I was insured with his, and in the end I wasn't insured with anybody's. But it was um, an innocent thing done. If I realised I wasn't insured, I wouldn't have driven the vehicle. However, um, I got in touch with a solicitor, and uh, he said, yeah, we'll get you down to um, probably three points, I made the only quid five. I ended up paying the solicitor £475 pound and getting £450 pound fine off the court and six points on the license. And at that point I thought that is not justice, there was no harm done and I had done it in all cases. So that's what started me on the journey. And then I started looking on the internet at um, things like people selling books so you get off, get off a speed ticket, get off uh, parking tickets and all the rest of it. And then I come across the TPU website. Uh, everybody know about the TPUC website? Anybody not know? Right, tpuc.org. It's the People's United Community. You should get on there and see what some of your rights are. Right, um, I just want to say something before the start. A famous mason who founded the Ku Klux Klan, Albert Pike, said <clears throat> famously, It's the dead that rule, the living only obey. <clears throat> right. Let's start with a person. Does everybody know what a person is? I know there's a young man over there who says, no, 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 you're wrong. There are many definitions of person in, in the books, in the dictionaries, whether it be legal dictionaries, common English dictionaries or business dictionaries, many different definitions of person. Let's break the word down, shall we? Person. Person. What does per mean? Well, Origins of 50 pence a pound in us there. What is the sun? It's that big orange ball in the sky. But it's also, I am my father's son. I am not a person. I am not ex up for exchange, for value, for money or whatever. My, my dad always say, used to say to me, if there's one thing I've got, son, it's principles. And he was right. Um, my family motto is an oak tree and it says, stand sure which is what I've been trying to do over the last few years against this, in my opinion, criminal, corrupt government, law system, or legal system, a financial system. We know everything that's gone on with the banks, they've just given them another 80 billion pounds. Our government has given the banks 80 billion, they gave them 750 billion four years ago. Where's that gone? Why aren't there any bankers in court why aren't there any MPs in court? Why isn't John Cheney in court for the racial abuse last week? He got a fine off the FA. Why is he brought before the courts? You know, we've done it in a public place. Why are our courts criminal? Well, I'm, 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 I'm here to say, allegedly, they are. They are. But there's a number of things I want to say tonight, and I hope I don't bore you to death. Please forgive me for the trip up because I've not put this talk together very well. I've got lots of things going on in the background, as one or two of you already know. 
which had distracted me from my research. But this is a this is an item I come across six eight months ago. Um, it's on oneheaven.org, I think it is. Yeah, oneheaven.org. Canon's positive law. Let me read through it through to you. All right. Um, and I come to the point of maybe what a person and what a person is. It starts off Canon 3347, a settlement certificate, also known as a birth certificate since 1837, is an official document issued to validly record poor granting them certain basic rights and entitlements and benefits in exchange for their recognition of their status of being owned as property and lawful slaves, also known as indentured servants and bondsmen. A settlement, therefore, is equivalent to a voluntary slave plantation. Canon 3348. Under, Henry, under King Henry VIII of England and his Venetian Magar advisors, the first poor laws were promulgated around 1535, coinciding with the first official mandate requiring uniform record keeping by all Church of England parishes at births, deaths and marriages. The poor were considered the responsibility of the Church, including ensuring they had ample work and did not starve to death, as they were considered by default the property of the Church. Canon 3349, we're coming back in history. Under Queen Elizabeth I of England, a set of measures were introduced which had the effect of accelerating the disenfranchisement of land peasants into landless paupers. Under the erection of the Cottages Act 1588, peasants required local parishes permission to erect dwellings, whereas before the erection of a dwelling by a land peasant or their lord's land was considered a right. As a result, the ranks of the landless poor and paupers swelled. Canon 3350. Under Queen Elizabeth I of England, the laws concerning the administration and care of the poor were refined through the Poor Law 1601, which introduced a basic set of rights for the poor, as well as the introduction of two overseers of the poor, guardian in each parish. Elected at Easter and funded through the first levy tax to local rates now called council taxes. And council taxes will come into a bit more later on. On property, only ratepayers. Canon 3351. Under Charles II of England, the concept of settlements as plantations of working poor controlled by the church movement was further refined through the Settlement Act 1662 and Poor Relief Act 1662, including for the first time the issuance of settlement certificates. Equivalent to a birth certificate, passport and social security rolled into one document. A, birth, a child's birth place was its place of settlement, unless its mother had a settlement certificate from some other parish stating that the unborn child was included on the certificate. However, from the age of seven upwards, the child could have been apprenticed and gained the settlement for itself through called indentured services or voluntary slavery. Also, the child could have obtained settlement for itself by service the time it was 16. Canon 3352, under the reforms of the Settlement Act 1662 and the Poor Relief Act, no one is allowed to move from town to town without the appropriate settlement certificate. If a person entered a parish in which he or she did not have an official settlement and seemed likely to become chargeable to the new parish, then an examination will be made by the justices or parish overseers, from this examination or oath, the justice would determine that if a person had the means to sustain himself, the results of the examination were documented in an examination paper. As a result of the examination, the intruder would then, be allowed, would then either be allowed to stay or be removed by means of what was known as a removal order. Where we read that before, anybody who's been under the cash by these borders. The origin of the modern equivalent of a conviction and removal notice, that's what it is, when the sheriff removes people from their home. Canon 3353. According to the various settlement acts from the 17th century onwards until the introduction of birth certificates, the issue of a settlement certificate was considered a privilege. So you were privileged to be enslaved. 
not of might. Now, if a peasant wanted to move, the whole parish could choose to issue an acceptance certificate, which then became an indemnity insurance to the new parish if the pauper was unable to earn a living. A settlement certificate was only valid if it bore the seals of the overseers of both parishes and that of the local justices and was not transferable. This is the same model for modern passport citizens as listed as P today, paupers. This is my father's passport, so couldn't find mine. Right? If you have a look at your passport, the first thing it says is passport UK type P. So you're all classed as paupers and don't care how much you've got, you're all paupers. Don't believe me, I'm looking at passport. And ask your MP, can I have a look at your passport? Very much starting to get to see it. Right, due to the increase in, increase in the number of the poor, in 1723 a new law was passed called the Workhouse Test Act, in which those who wished to claim benefits and relief as poor now had to enter a workhouse, being essentially a prison for men, women and children to perform some set of work. To ensure that all poor were accounted and could be identified, new laws were also introduced to force the paupers to wear a pin on their right shoulders as a mark of their status. This is both the origin of the pin still placed as a mark on modern passports and other official documents and the pin worn by prisoners from the 20th century. 3355 canon. In the beginning of 1773, with the Enclosure Act, followed by the Enclosure Consolidation Act of 1801, English Parliament effectively privatised massive amounts of common land for the benefit of a few, causing huge numbers of land peasants to become landless parishes, and therefore in need of parish assistance, the Enclosure Acts are the foundation of land title as it is known today. 3356 canon. Because of the deliberate legal theft of land under parliamentary enclosure laws of the late 18th century and early 19th, the number of paupers dramatically increased. This led to the most awful and cruel laws being introduced to deliver to an elite few the slave force needed for the industrialization through the Poor Law Amendment Act 1834, which effectively stated that the poor could not receive any benefit unless they were constantly employed in a warehouse prison. Thus, despite the international treaties against slavery, the very worst slavery being wage slavery, or lawful slavery, was born, whereby men, women and children lived in terrible conditions and were worked to death. 3357, beginning in 1834, a number of historical changes were introduced to the record keeping of births, death and marriages, the issuance of documents and the management of the poor. In 1834, British Parliament introduced the Poor Law Amendments Act, which which reorganised Church of England parishes into unions, which would then be responsible for the poor in their area and administered by a board of poor law guardians, also known as the Board of Guardians. The clerk of Magistrates Court still holds the power of a clerk of the Board of Guardians. In 1835, the Municipal Corporations Act was introduced, which effectively standardised the corporate model for towns and boroughs including making the municipality with elected officials responsible for data collection and administration purposes. In 1836, Birth, Deaths and Managers Act was introduced for the first time, creating the GRO, the General Registry Office, or the Register Office. And the requirement for uniform records of birth, deaths and marriages across the empire by municipal councils and unions of parishes. parishes. July 1837, the birth certificate was formed as the successor of the settlement certificate for all paupers disenfranchised of their land, their right, to be considered lawful, voluntary slaves with benefits provided by the local parish region under it by the Society of Lords as it is today. Three feet, I feel like a flaming priest day, you know. <laughs> well, I'm going to get through this because. It's, it's drawn in a picture of what the hell is going on now, and it, it, it's relevant to what I'm about to say. Right, 3358, beginning from 17, 1871, sorry, further historic changes in the administration of vital statistics, such as birth certificates, death certificates, with the introduction of health districts or sanitary districts. 
The Local Government Act of 1871, Public Health Act 1872 and Public Health Act 1875 created a system of districts called sanitary districts governed by a sanitary authority responsible for various public health matters, including mental health, legally known as sanity. Two types of sanitary districts were created being urban and, urban and rural. While the sanitary districts were abolished in 1894 with the Local Government Act of that year, the administration of the poor is still maintained under the concept of district health boards of guardians, including magistrates and other justices of the peace. Since 1990, under the United Nations and the World, the World Health Organization, by the Convention on the Rights of the Child, a system of issuing birth certificates as proof of a man being a permanent member of the other class has become an international system. One fundamental flaw that remains with the settlement birth certificate for the Roman cult and its agents remains the fact that a settlement certificate is proof that a man or woman must have been born on the land for the certificate to have effect regardless of convoluted subsequent presumptions and of what, of what the certificate actually represents. If a man or woman was not born on the land, somewhere the certificate could not be issued. Therefore, any rejection of the birth certificate serves as a perfect, perfect evidence that a woman was born on the land and support to any affidavit of truth concerning the immutable rights of the divine creator. <clears throat> Canon 3361. As settlement certificates and later birth certificates are solely purposely designed to disenfranchise men and women from their rightful inheritance through voluntary enslavement and admission to being paupers. The system of birth certificate is wholly without legitimacy, a global system of organised fraud and crime without law for effect. That's where the birth certificate comes from. Now, <coughs> I'm aborting anyone yet. If you say yeah, it doesn't matter. Well, it's, uh, it's a fact, you know, but, uh, now let's go, uh, let's go to this part here, shall we? Can, can I just ask you, what are the other, uh, the other letters on your passport, this P, what are the others? There's lots of other letters on the passport. You've got GBR over there. No, 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 that's no, 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 no. Where it says passport type, what are the three? That's it, P, I don't know. P, I've never seen anybody. There's P, there's S, and there's D. Is there? What's yes. S and D? P is for personal. S is for service and D is for diplomatic. Right, well, I, don't, I disagree with the P is for personal, P is for pauper. That's what it means. I disagree. But I didn't know the other two. Diplomatic can come along with you, yeah, service and whatnot. I've never been in service. I'm strike and tell you that. You've been in service, so it's got an S. Yeah, okay. Right. I'm saying this is my truth, I'm not saying it's correct, right? Right, I want to have a look at the police results because I'm going to tell you a little story now, right? Police results, anybody not know the police results here? Do we all know it? No, no, no. right, okay, I'll read it. This, uh, I mean, you've changed it, you see, when was it looking to change it? 2002. 2002, but before that, this is what it was. I, Joe Silver, of whatever, do suddenly sincerely declare and affirm that I will well and truly serve the Queen in the office of Constable with fairness, integrity, diligence and impartiality, upholding the fundamental human rights and according equal respect to all people and that I will to the best of my power cause the peace to be kept and preserved and prevent all offences against people and property. It doesn't say persons and property, it says people and property. And that, I, that while I continue the, to hold the said office, I will, to the best of my skill and knowledge, discharge all the duties thereof faithfully according to law. I got arrested two weeks ago. Because I was in Carnarvon Court over an alleged speaking defence, which, which um, was supposedly in January this year. And the charge was failing to supply driver details. And um, I, I can often call this is the second thing now, this is the second hearing. The first hearing, uh, they didn't recognise me as a man, right? Um, they said, what's your name? And I said, I am dealing with the blah, blah, blah family. And they said, well, case is here until whatever, because we can't uh, recognise who you are. <clears throat> so we can often go on 9-11, 
Right now, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, along with three witnesses, went in and was a district judge. And he said, are you David, Mr. David blah blah? I said, no, I'm David of the blah 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 family. He said, are you David? I said, no, I'm such and so. And he said, get out of my court. You have no business here. You are free to go. And me and one of my witnesses went, he said, please leave now, you have no business here. And the gas fitters, if you don't know who they are, they're G4S. You know, uh, <laughs> they, they came along and they pushed, it, pushed us out. And on the way out, this judge, so-called, said, I'm putting an arrest warrant out for Mr. David, blah, blah, blah. Now, if I go to this group, I want to thank you, mate, Robert here, for bringing this to my attention. Apparently, this book is supposed to be in every police station. It's uh, Blackstone Statutes on Criminal Law. This one's the up-to-date version, 2012 to 2013. Um, right, part two, the first protocol. Protection of property, article one. Every natural or legal person is entitled to peaceful enjoyment of his possessions. So that means there's a difference between a natural person and a legal person. Would anybody disagree with that? This is in the Human Rights Act 1988. Anybody not? Everybody agree with me there? That there is a difference between a natural and a legal person. Okay. Right, so... I dispute that I'm a natural person. I'm not a person, full stop. I'm the son of my father. Crikey, he sang it so many times to us, didn't he? Son of my father, who was it? Chicky Tip. <laughs> and we did, didn't he? Son of my father. Anyway, I just want to play the song. I just played that together with thoughts. <laughs> well, who are you? That's the question. Are you Mr. or Mrs. Joseph? What is Mr. and Mrs. or Mr. Joseph to title? Are you a title? Are you a bit of ink on a piece of paper? <clears throat> your mum and dad called you whatever you did. But does that mean that's your name? What is your name? Now, if you read the Masonic Dictionaries, which are very easily downloadable off the internet, you'll find out that words that are getting used against us are broken down all the time in the Masonic Dictionary. I'll just pick one or two out. Seal. What's a seal? Right, let's read what it says. Yeah, a couple of one of them. Yeah, well, let's read what it says. Right. This, like our word sign and insignia, is derived from the Latin sigillum, diminutive of signum, meaning mark or sign. It's a microphone off, sorry. Sorry, yeah. That's my fault. <laughs> It is some kind of device affixed to a document in place of a signature or in close connection with the signature for the purpose of showing that the document is regular or official. A document bearing the seal of a lodge shows that it is officially used by the lodge and not by some irresponsible person or persons. The word is also used of the tool by means of which the device is stamped into wax or whatever similar material may be used for the purpose. That's a seal. Anybody, any ideas what a temple is? Because when you go into court, that's what you're walking into. A temple. Just have a look at them. They walk up the, the arch, yeah, the, you know, the uh, pillars, and they try, you know, the Roman stuff. Right, let's have a look at the temple. 
The Greeks had a temenos, a sacred enclosure, a plot of ground marked off to be a holy place. The Latins had templum, a consecrated place. A, consecrated place. a temple is a building set apart because it is holy, dedicated to religious uses. It has a place in masonry large because of the prominence of Sol Solomon's temple in the ritual. It is interesting to note that in the Masonic nomenclature, the idea like here and hereafter is described metaphorically as a temple. One of a thousand examples of the extent to which Freemasonry is saturated with religious language and emotions. What did I mean, I'm going to go to the Bible here because there's a lot of truth and there's a lot of nonsense in the Bible. And I'm not a Christian and I don't believe in the whole story of it, but I do believe that there are clues um, what you should do and what you shouldn't do. What's moral and what's not moral. What did, what did Jesus say to do before you walk into a temple? Take your shoes off as a mark of respect. Whether or not it's your religion or whether it is, isn't it? Take your shoes off because it's a mark of respect. And what do we do? We go into these temples with our shoes on. I wonder if we're disrespecting their religion because we know a vast majority of magistrates, district judges, and all these characters high up in um, councils and industry and all the rest of it. We, all, we know they're all masons. So are we disrespecting them if we don't take our shoes off? It's a thought, you know. Um, Tyler. How do we know that, Miss? I don't know it. I'm asking. My 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 son-in-law was a district judge, and right. he's he's not racist. No, but most of them. I didn't say all of them. I said most of them, the vast majority. I didn't say all. Right, Tyler. What's a Tyler? Tyler. Yeah, Tyler. You know. Okay, stands at the door of the Mason's lodging in Westbury. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, but the average person, oh, sorry, the average man, right, thinks of Tyler as somebody who lays more tiles or puts tiles on the roof. I'll give you the uh, definition. Also spelled T Y L E R in the Latin T A, from which came thatch, meant cover, roof. Tegule with the tiles, pieces, slabs used for roof coverings. A tiler, therefore, is one who makes or fastens on tiles. Since in operative masonry, the tiler was a workman who closed the building in and hid its interior from outside view. The guardian of the entrance of the lodge was frequently called by his name. It was once supposed that tiler came from the French tailor, a cutter, a hewer from whence we have tailor, and it was accordingly spelled tiler. That, however, is incorrect, tiler being the correct spelling. These are just some words I'm throwing at you. The reason being because everybody's looking at the legal dictionary definitions of things when they're trying to defend themselves when they're going into court. And it might be a completely different meaning in a business dictionary. Rob's been um, telling me about the business dictionaries. They're the ones that you need to look at. Um, I, I could go on, but just have a look at the... Um, have a look if you're interested in what words mean in the Masonic Dictionary, the free on the internet. Right, human rights. Um, anybody know, or does anybody not know, what the 1948 Declaration of Universal Human Rights are? Does that, you don't know, anybody not know? I suggest you go home and read them. It was a pledge by all governments after the war and the carnage which Rob put me on to, by the way. Bollocks, by the way, holds a meeting in Ashton every week on a Wednesday. I suggest you go along to it, those who are interested, um, to find out about the likes of human rights. Okay, all human beings have... Um, right, so after the carnage of the Second World War, whole Europe was obliterated. He said a few good men, I like to think, got together and said, we can't let this happen again. We'll come out with human rights. Now there's another thing, human, I've got a problem with human. Because I look at films and, you know, things like the colour of money. 
It looks like money, but it's not bloody money, is it? Hey? It's not. Or well, the colour of law. Law is either black or it's white. There's no in between. And I go back to um, the Wizard of Oz. And she's in canvas and then gets switched off into the land of Oz. And then suddenly it goes in colour. It's the colour of Kansas or Oz, but it's not really Oz. And then anyway, at the end, the film ends, she taps her feet three times. And she ends back in Kansas, which is black and white. It's either black and white or it's colour. If it's colour, it's the colour of something. It looks like it, but it's not actually that. The colour of law, the colour of money. In this case, hue is a colour. Hue, man. Hue, man. Am I human? According to this document I have, <coughs> which I'll go into that in the second half. So anyway, all human beings born free, equal, in dignity and rights, they are endowed with reason and conscience and should always act together to act towards one another in the spirit of brotherhood. Everyone's right to life to liberty is security of person. Mm, that comes up in the 1998 um, Human Rights Act as well. Interesting thing, which I'll get into in the second half. And uh, you want to you stay to hear that one. So everyone's the right to life, liberty, and security in person. Does that actually say that in the uh, 1998 Act that everybody's got the right to life? It doesn't say that, does it? Does it? I've not looked at it close enough, thank you, Rob. Not in the same uh, article anyway. No one shall be held in slavery or servitude. According to that document I just read out at the beginning. Servitude, and we're all paupers. And the slave trade shall be prohibited in all their forms. No one shall be subjected to torture or cruel, inhuman, degrading treatment or punishment. Um, go on and read it. It's, it's, deadly, it's only 30 hours old. It, it actually says in there that the human, this declaration of human rights should be taught and understood in all schools. Has anybody taught that? Has anybody been to school since 1948? <laughs> I know sad all about the human rights. Were you ever taught? Or you get told about from me, oh human rights, it's a oh, bloody nuisance, this man has got away because of the human rights act. Well I'm gonna say they're trying to poo-poo it because they're trying to make you think it's red tape and all the rest of it. Well, it's our only defence. Any rights that we've got through this and through um, the 1998 Human Rights Act. They're the only flaming rights they've given the person or the human man. But it turns around and says at the end of the Article 30, nothing in this declaration may be interpreted as applying for any state, group or person any right to engage in activity or to perform any act aimed at the destruction of any of the rights and freedoms set forth herein. I think it's Article 11. Article 10. Everyone is entitled to full equality, to a fair and public hearing by an independent and impartial tribunal in the determination of his rights and obligations and of any crime charged against him. Uh, what is a magistrate's court? What is a county court? Not that. It's not that. Well, we'll talk, we'll talk about that, but is it time for a vote? Oh. It's quarter to nine. Fourteen. Yeah, fifteen. Fifteen. Nine o'clock. Okay, yeah. fine. No one shall be subjected to arbitrary, arbitrary interference with his privacy, family, home or correspondence, nor to attacks upon his honour and reputation. Everyone has the right to the protection of the law against such interference or attack, attacks. No one shall be subjected to arbitrary interference with Correspondence. The council, each council in the county, has the authority to listen in on your telephone calls, to intercept your emails whenever it wants. Did you know that? That's, that's your local council can listen in on. You know, if you listen in on mine, you learn a few things and those as well. Um, Everyone charged with a penal offence has the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty in court of law in a public trial, at which he has 
had all the guarantees necessary for his defence. No one should be held guilty for any penal offence on account of any act or omission which did not constitute a penal offence under the national or international law at the time it was committed, nor shall a heavier penalty be imposed than the one that was applicable at the time the penal offence was committed. This government has just poo pooed that article, they agreed with it in 1948, pledged that it would stick to it, and they're not sticking to it, full stop. You know, uh, I, I got a, a, a speeding ticket, which by the way is against the Bill of Rights 1688, uh, back in January, and against the Human Rights, uh, Declaration of Human Rights 1948, because it promised me a fine. It convicted me before I'd even been in front of a court, whether it be a star chamber court that's out there now, or whether it be a court, a public court. They convicted me before I'd even had a chance to say yes, it was me or no, it wasn't. So, everyone has the right to seek and enjoy in other countries asylum from persecution. What's our government done this week? So that, um, what's his name? What's that guy? The one eye in the hood. What have they done? The, the guy's probably going to get murdered over there, isn't he? And what about that hacker? What's his name? Nick? Yeah. Well, his name is another guy talking about who hacked into the NASA computer and uh, got all this information supposedly about UFOs and he was going to tell everybody. And he's been shut up. And um, he, well, is he over there now? I don't know. Because you don't hear things like that on the news. Well, all you hear, I, oh, last, I, I left here last Monday, and the headline was on Smooth Radio. Um, a load of people were really disappointed tonight, uh, today because the con World Conquer Championship was called off because the venue couldn't support them. <laughs> this is the bloody news that you get. You know, I mean, I mean, I don't watch television, as, you, as most of you know out there, but I, I do have a radio, I like to listen to the music, and, um, you know, you're getting fed, bull. Our, our rights are being trodden on, and, and by the way, they are in the Hague this week, discussing human rights, in other words, they're going to be changing some of the free law rights that we've got in 1998 Act. They're doing that in the Hague this week. So I went to see the MP in my, my local area on Saturday, and that's where he'd gone. And it was in particular about human rights issues I wanted to speak to him about. Um, right, let's move on, shall we? Exactly what the MP said. Article 30. Exactly, it says you can't take away any of these rights. And, and why? The, but, but, hang on. We're, we're, here, we're here now, aren't we? You know, you, some of you people out there are very well up to date and clued up with what's going on. Some of you may not be. Your neighbours and your friends and your family haven't got a clue what's going on. They're sitting there tonight watching Coronation Street, Emmerdale Farm, bloody Dallas is back again. They're feeding us the same crap over and over and over and over and over and over again. Right, and you come up with these bloody puppets who start telling news, so-called news. I was on um, radio last week, last Sunday. Um, I wasn't invited on, I was invited myself on, you know. Because he turned around and he said, he was talking about the hills, but you know the cover-up on the hills, man? Yeah. Right, well, they're covering up all sorts of things, just about everything you can think of uh, is a cover-up. But they were going on about Hillsborough and one of the guys who did it, and he said, it could be worse, we could live in a totalitarian state. <laughs> it's, it's a blessing that we live in a free democratic country. I went, oh, I've, got to, I've, I've got to respond to this. I've got to. So I got in the car. <laughs> I won't tell you why I got in the car, but I got in the car. And anyway, I said, I'm getting low on credit here, mate, but I want to respond to that um, last remark. Okay, yeah, cool. Uh, we'll read you back. So, sure enough, this, he reads back and said, we've got Dave on here, he wants to talk about um, totalitarian and whatever. And I said, well, you mentioned that we live in a free and democratic society. That's a contradiction in terms. 
You cannot have a free democratic society. Democracy is mob rule. That's it. And you can't be free in a mob rule. If 51% of people say that murder, rape, pedophilia is okay, the other 49 have got to say, oh, okay, and walk away. There's no such thing as a free democracy. It's a contradiction in terms. And he said, well, yeah, yeah. I said, well, what, what sort of thing? You, you're telling us that we live in a free de de democratic country right now. Well, and you mentioned totalitarian. I said, what about fascism? What about a fascist country? And he said, well, yeah, it's not fascist, is it, isn't it? What's the definition of fascism? I said, I'll tell you, it's corporate incest and state working together hand in hand. That's called Mussolini. And guess what? The United Kingdom is a, public, a private limited corporation. It's private, I think. Is it public private? Well, thank you. All right. Well, it's a public private. I'd like, well, I'll, I'll speak to you later on that. So why are you wasting your time quibbling about meaning words and not doing something about it? What do you think I'm doing now? Counting, counting out. No, 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 no. What do you think I'm doing now? I'm trying to let the people who don't know these things know so that they, they can either take action but themselves or not. You're just putting me off, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, the last three or four minutes, you've been talking absolute sense. I yeah. agree with you totally. Yeah. So why are we arguing about what a bloody person is when we know because it's significant? Is, is it's significant, and you'll find out later on in the second half how significant it is. Because they won't recognise you as a man, right? And as far as a person is concerned, you're dead. Bison. Bison. A person is a dead thing, and I'll explain that later. Right? That's what a person is. Now, where was I? I knew you told me that. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, public private limited corporation hand in hand with the state. That is fascism. Now, we've all let it get to this, every one of us, because we've all done the same sitting there watching Coronation Street or going to the pub or going to the football match or sitting there watching Film 4 or other things that are on high up the channels, which we won't go into. Um, so we're all guilty of it if we haven't actually said something. How many people here have actually gone to their local MP and said, Oi! Anybody? Has anybody been to visit the local MP in the last 12 months? <laughs> Three, four people. Five including me. My, the MP of my area, I'm not going to say my MP because he doesn't represent me. Because I am not a citizen. Right. Yeah. I've been emailing my business that can. Yeah, that counts. We've got to be in touch with these. And all the councils. These, um, oh, well, they're only puppets. But if you make them aware, that there are some good ones there, but and they, they can see corruption going on, but they don't know where it's coming from and how these people are getting away with it. Right now, there's four or five people here, right, and you're obviously politically active anyway. Otherwise, you're not here. Yes, sir. Uh, I listened to our MP just about a week ago, four and a half ago, and he did his typical long speech, so there's no time for questions. We've got three questions, and he said that's finished. Yeah. Well, there were about 60 of us. Ideally, we should have had about 60 questions, and I have got my one in. I asked my MP, I wrote to the, my MP, it's not my MP, sorry, I wrote to my local MP last Monday asking for an hour of his time sometime this week. Um, I got a letter back Saturday morning saying he has a slot at 3 o'clock Friday, <laughs> the day before, and he can only give you 20 minutes. Now, I've been there, uh, you know, I had a surgeries, they have surgeries every month, I think it is, and I've been there, and I've been one of, of at the most two people. Nobody goes to challenge these bobbers to see what they're up to. And when you do challenge them, you say, oh, well, uh, this is Cameron, you know, this is Cameron. No, 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 hang on a sec, no. You're all playing the same song sheet here. You're all singing on the same song sheet. And these things that are happening now, 
were put in by Gordon Brown and Tony Blair. And the stuff that's coming out now with Cameron, right, when they lose the next election, the Labour Party will say, oh, that's Cameron. And then Cameron, do, they'll do the same thing. So they get away, they get away with taking everything away from us, turning us, quite everybody's under stress. Everybody's under stress. Cats are waiting up, illnesses are waiting up. You, you, you know, we can go on to things like chemtrails, which they even tell you on the government website, type in geoengineering on the government website, and it'll tell you what to do with these flaming chemtrails. They are altering um, the atmosphere. So they say, I think it's more serious than good. You know, why, why are people going up saying, hey, what about this? And never mind the crap that's on TV. You know, never mind that thought of the BBC, good heavens, what the hell is anybody doing? Buying a TV license? Hey, thank you, that propaganda machine. Anyway, I'm down for a cup of tea, and in a second half, we will then be going into the likes of council tax. The significance of the person in the court and in the bank, and think about the financial and legal system, and um, your, your local government. Um, and that's the first half done. Can I just ask one quick question? Please? You can. Uh, you know when you're on about birth certificates, yes. you the poor person. Yeah. Does that mean people like the royal family and things like that? Do they not get issued with a birth what certificate? What makes you think that they get birth certificates? Has anybody actually put and asked that question or something? Yeah. Basically, that, that, I think that's a really, really good question. Do these people have birth certificates? I very much doubt they have. Has anybody ever challenged them and asked them to produce it? Because I'd love to know. Well, I'll tell you what happened in the second half of my birth certificate this week. I have a letter here from HM Treasury, and I'll tell you more about that in the second half. Hope you enjoyed the first half, and thank you for listening. <laughs>
Article 6, Human Rights Declaration, Universal, says everyone has the right to recognition everywhere as a person before the law. Why does it say that? Because you're not a bloody person. You're not a person. You can't be a person, otherwise it wouldn't say everyone has the right to recognition everywhere as a person before the law. So what is a person? Well, in my way of thinking, my way of thinking, right, I believe the person is the birth certificate. That's what I believe it is. Now, some people may disagree. I don't care. That's my reality. Um, just like I don't believe I'm a human. I believe I am my father's son, whatever that is. And if you go back to the play of the Bible, I'm looking at somebody was talking about the Bible earlier on in the break. Um, on the sixth day, God created, or God said, Come, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So that means there's more than one God, because He said, Come, let us make man in our image. So it also means to me that man was already there because the God's made him said, Come, let us make a creature, and we'll call him man, and we'll put him in our image after our likeness. So, in my way of thinking, interpretation, is that we were already here, we've been duped into being what we are today, and then this Lord God comes along and creates Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden to do all the hard work. I wonder if man, created by the yellow he, are the elite, and we are the ones created by the Lord God and stuck in the Garden of Eden to dig all the land and dig the gold out of the land and all that sort of stuff. But I don't know which one of them I am, but I know I'm not a person. Right. Now, birth certificates. Got to tell you, I was in court two weeks, three weeks tomorrow in Canafon, North Wales. And there was a man there acting as a judge. I don't know whether he was a judge because I didn't get time to ask if he was acting on his oath of office at that time. But I walked in and he said, are you Mr. Blah Blah? And I said, no, I'm there. I told you that. Right, get out, you've got no business here. I'm putting an arrest warrant out for the Mr. David Blah Blah Blah. <clears throat> In front of three witnesses. Two days later, I got a letter from Carnarvon Court. I think I've got it here, I'll show you. And it says, there is a warrant out for your arrest for demanding on bail. Um, blah, 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 blah. No reason why. Um, I rang the court up on Friday and I said, what the hell's going on? Why is the arrest warrant out for me? Um, because I was standing there in front of the judge and he told me to leave. I had no business there. But you said it wasn't you. I said I was not that person. It wasn't. They can't arrest you. I got arrested by a PC, I shouldn't mention his name, it's not his fault. Well, it is really, isn't it? <laughs> he should know better. I, uh, in front of a witness, I explained that I was at the court and that the judge told me to leave twice because I had no business there. So he recognised the difference between a natural person and a legal person as defined in the Human Rights Act 1998 where it says every natural or legal person has the right or whatever. So he obviously recognised that I was not a legal person. And he chased me out. And then put an arrest warrant out for the legal person. And to reappear before the court a week tomorrow. So I went to one of the police station and said, is this, what's going on here? Um, anyway, the policeman arrested me and I said, be careful what you do. Be very careful what you do. Because I'm telling you, a judge told me to leave the court because he recognised that I was not that legal person and you are about to make a legal determination in total opposition to that judge. And his head went, well I'm only doing my job. I'm only doing my job. Okay, anything I say or do after you've arrested me is under your arrest. Okay, that's it. Right, okay. 
You have the right to remain silent, blah, blah, blah. Do you have anything to say? Yes, no comment. I want this on the record because this could be part of a legal case anyway, but it will be. Um, anyway, he was a nice enough um, constable. And he then put me in the back of the van with a, a, another young uh, special constable. And I said, can we speak off the record? He said, yeah, yeah, no problem. I said, how long have you been in the force? He said, 15 years. I said, 15 years? I said, where were you before here in Marshley? He said, it was in Crosby. I said, oh, you are my mate. My mate uh, was in Crosby. He said, oh, what's his name? So I'll give him his badge number and his surname. He said, oh, yeah, I know George. I said, well, if you ring George now, you'll find out that I am not a criminal. I'm not a thug. I've never been in trouble with the Lord in my life. I've never been arrested. I've never been cautioned. And yet, here I am, stuck in the back of your van. And you've made a legal determination which opposes what a judge in Carnarvon Court has already said. Be very careful what you do from now on, because you just, just overruled a, court, a, judge, a judge's decision. Do you know what your oath of office is? Oh, he said, it's gone back 15 years. I said, really? I said, I'll just remind you about that oath of office. You took an oath of office to defend all my hu human fundamental rights <coughs> and protect my, the people's property. Did you not? He went, yeah. I said, so do you know what all my fundamental human rights are? And he said, no. I said, no, and I'm stuck in the back of a van. You're supposed to be protecting my fundamental human rights, and you don't even know what they are. I suggest when you get home tonight, you get it, get that human rights book out, and you read what my human rights are, because right now you are in violation of mine. You're standing on my toes. It's bloody disgrace, this, that, and that. Anyway, I said, say no more about it. Okay, say no more about it. So we started talking about, you know, my mate and how we got on. Then we got to the custody suite and um, we went to display this stuff called smart water on you now if you've been arrested. He said, just stand there and say, oh, next minute. What was that? <laughs> smart water. I said, oh, what are you we just sprayed him with smart water. I said, what's that? He said, oh, it's in case you've been involved in a, a G4S high heist. Just brand new gym. Why are they, yeah, why are they protecting G4S? He didn't say it's in case you've robbed the bank. They said it's in case you have been involved in robbing G4S. Make it up like you want. <coughs> so I said, well, I object to that, man. You know, it's not. Not that can do about it now. So did he say what's actually in the paper? No, he said it's harmful. It's harmless. He said it's only water. I know that I've read I've read the stuff that's in here. Uh, it, it, it ain't very nice, but that's gonna be part of um, it's a small part of the plate. Um, so anyway, this a sergeant who was at the custody suite, no names not packed up, he'll be getting a letter in the morning off his boss, no doubt. Um, he said, right, name. I said, no comment. He said, we can either do it two ways. We can do it your way, in which case I'll put you in a cell till Monday morning. This is Friday night. And I went there voluntary, by the way. I'll put you in a cell till Monday and then you can get in front of a judge and explain your stuff. Or you can comply and you'll be out in half an hour. I said, well, I'm not trying to be awkward. I'm just trying to protect myself. He said, you are trying to be awful. I said, no. He said, what's your name? The police constable said, David Lava. Ah, I bet. He said, date of birth. And he came up with me date of birth. And at that point I thought, oh dear, that constable has just took power of attorney over me. I expect to see him in court when I go to Carnarvon Court next Tuesday <coughs> to defend me and if he can't defend me, 
that he's going to have to face all liability and consequences of whatever this judge is going to throw at him because he's, in my way of thinking, stolen uh, my person's identity and is liable for the consequences now. But that was up to him. Um, <clears throat> anyway, then he was asking me things like, are you on any medication? I uh, can't answer that under the Data Protection Act. Uh, are you on a special diet? Can't answer that under the Data Protection Act. And he said, look, I'm just trying to make an assessment here. In case you drop down and you need assistance, health-wise, he said, well, I'm on all sorts of bloody pills and there's all sorts wrong with me. You know, I only eat nuts and stuff like that. And uh, I do like my eggs easy over in the morning. And, <laughs> anyway, so then I got released. Now, at no time, and the document is here, somewhere, we can have a look at it there. At no time did anybody tell me why I was arrested. He never said, you are being arrested for not turning up at court. That's the policeman. The piece of paper that I got off the court saying there was an arrest warrant out didn't say because you never turned up at court. The only time I found, oh by the way, another thing, the letter that I got off the court saying there is an arrest warrant out for your person, right, didn't have, have the reasons why there was an arrest warrant, and it said, please appear on the 9th at 12 noon, right. So, he gave me this sheet, I took it off him. By the way, digital pens, right? you know the, these digital pens? They don't work in custody suites. Doesn't matter what mark you make, it's all scribble, it's nonsense. Because I was right, trying to write by my signature and then principal, authorised representative. Right? It won't allow you to do that. It comes out as a scribble. Four times we try to get this pen to work and it doesn't work, it's just a scribble. Right, so, anyway, I said I want it noted that that is not my signature, on the record. So, give me the charge sheet, and I went out, and I thought, I fancy a drink, bad enough today. So I jumped in my car, to go get off licence, next minute, <coughs> now the car comes another cop car, parks right up the back of my mind, and stops me from getting out of my drive. Bloody hell, I know what this is about, open the door. He got out and said, are you here to arrest me? He said, yeah. Are you Mr. Blah Blah? I said, hey, I've already been down there. And I told him the details and all the rest of it, and so on and so forth. And I went through the story I'm telling you about what happened with court. And he said, God, you got a complaint against the judge there. I said, no, I have. I said, I've also got a complaint against your officer. Well, I'm not going to, you know, let's not go there now. It's not to do with you. So, after that, I thought, I'll go down and complain the next day. I was put off by um, the station inspector. I rang you again a few days later, after finding the stuff out in here. All right, and um, I was put off by the sergeant. He said, I'm not taking your complaint. You'll have to write into the chief con, which happened today. That all went off today. Now, let's have a look at this. Bring to your attention uh, the, just bear with me a sec while I'll find it, what's it called? Uh, serious Crime. Serious Crimes 2007, 361. Serious Crime Act 2007, Part 2. Encouraging or assisting crime. A person commits an offence if he does an act capable of encouraging or assisting the commission of an offence. Did that policeman make a wrongful arrest? Did that policeman falsely imprison me? According to a judge in Carnarvon Court, yes. And according to a judge in, judge in Carnarvon Court, in my opinion, the judge knew exactly what he was doing and put the onus onto a mere constable to make that false arrest and wrongful, or wrongful arrest and false imprisonment. So he's culpable of a serious crime, it says there. So there is a complaint at Kinarvon as well. 
Now, so, the person is, in my opinion, the best certificate. And we've been cajoled into thinking it's not. And they say, no, 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 no. There's a tip. So I wanted this time to. Oh! No, because that's going to sound like telling me name. I'm going to tell you name. It's a best, best certificate form from St. George's Hall in Liverpool. You'll notice it's in pink. If you go for a death certificate or a, a marriage certificate, it is in white. So, the only place I've ever been in my life where you have to write in red pen. You write in people. Oh, you can't write in black, it's got to be in red. Why is that? That's the sign, that there is the sign of flesh and blood. Why is it in pink? What's the colour of our skin? It's pink. Why is it in red ink? Everywhere you go, you have to sign in black ink. Doesn't matter what it is, you sign your mortgage in black ink, you sign your um, whatever it is, it goes, even if you get married, you sign in black ink. You go to a bank, it's always in black, it's always in black. There you go. Can you tell me another reason why it's not in, not in black? Do you knock your head there or shake your head? Me? I, I just. Oh. I can't believe why you wasted your talent time, really, Dan. Yeah, I'm shaking my hand. Hey, I really that's a matter of opinion. That's your opinion. That's yeah, all right. I'm telling you my my opinion on yeah. things, right? There is a significance. I don't, I don't, I don't think he I don't think he wrongfully arrested you. All right, fine, okay. So, so no, I think he did. I think he did. Because he went against the judge's determination. No, he kicked and the person. Who do you think got He kicked the person you said you were. I didn't out. say I was that person. I said, said I am not that person. Exactly. So he sent the warrant out for the person that he wanted. Yeah, and I said to the person, the policeman, I am not that person. But he knew you I'm were. here. He made a legal determination that way. <laughs> Just like you are right now. I am not missed at anything. I haven't missed anything in this life yet. I am master of this vessel. Yeah. Yeah, I am not missed at anything. And, you could render and I am not even missed. You could render under Caesar what he sees us. Well, you, obviously you don't understand, right, the, the pedanticness of legalities. You think I'm being pedantic here, I'm not. Legal, legal stuff is pedantic in every way. The breakdown of every word, <coughs> every word on every document they sent you is very, very carefully chosen by very skilled lawyers, wordsmiths, right? Barristers, every, everything is very, very carefully done. They never put anything down which the could, which could uh, damn them. Now I find that damn them, but... Do you yeah. think that policeman knows that? Yeah. I mean, so, suppose he's totally innocent, it just, it just doesn't know that. I'm he didn't thinking. know my fundamental human rights. He took an oath of office 15 years ago to defend my human rights, my fundamental human rights. And he's been going around arresting people, not knowing. And these are the same fellas, by the way, who are assisting bailiffs to evict innocent families out of their homes. Absolutely. And arresting young people in, in local towns, right, for coming out of the pub, having a laugh on the way home, and getting dragged into back of meat wagons and given uh, bloody these penalty fines, 80 pound penalty fine, oh. and taking these people to the banks and saying, draw your attention. Oh, exactly. The point of end to, we've got to do something about this. Because the police are running riot. So. They are running a mock. Our, our politicians don't give a damn, and the ones who the ones who are doing making all these laws, they're running by it. Goodness me! Next year, next year, don't really wear this. Next October, there's a thing coming out, a direct payment, it's called, right? And all the pensioners, anybody else on benefits, is going to get a whole lump sum at the end of the month, right? And it's up to you to sort out your council tax, your rent, this, that, and the other, right? It's going to be one pay. Can you imagine the amount of confused elderly people are out there who get their rent paid direct from, from uh, the council, get the council tax paid direct from the housing benefit section, get this paid direct. How many of those poor, unfortunate 
elderly people who are going to be a bit, a bit confused about things. How many are going to, going to spend what they don't know, the, spend the housing or the council tax? How many of them are going to end up in these Yeah, no, just to let you know, in the lawful rebellion, there are so many policemen now doing the lawful rebellion who see the corruption from within and just have had enough. You'd be amazed how many people in the lawful rebellion that are right? policemen. You'll find the police now, the, the uh, application forms you've got to fill in for the police are deliberately choosing people who are, I can say, not as intelligent as perhaps you could have been. They're deliberately picking people who are being ordered and questioned. And, and you'll find that the, the new, the, the, this new generation of police since 2002, uh, they're very, they're, they're, their knowledge of the law is very limited because they don't get taught the law. Whereas the old constables used to get taught the law and used to be interested in that, now they're just being ordered. And there's been a big change, very corporate change, now the police is now run, the art corporation, and now how they are run. It was surprising when the police are now. We've got a little bit of time and we can discuss things at the end, okay. right? Okay. Um, so, in my opinion, I was wrongfully arrested and unlawfully imprisoned. And my human rights were violated, that's in 1998 states. And the constable and his inspector, by the way, didn't know what the human rights, what my human rights were. That's his inspector agreed. And I said, and you've got constables going out there arresting people, this, that, and the other, and you don't even know. I suggest you go home and you read and educate yourself and then how a meeting with all the constables and say, right, get up to speed on human rights. Because when you meet somebody like me, who's an awkward git, and other people like my friend up there, right, they could come and crop it. Because false imprisonment is a serious offence. And encouraging an offence is a serious crime. Anyway, right, so human rights, Article 5, Right to liberty and security. <clears throat> Everyone has the right to liberty and security of person. Funnily enough, it says that exactly the same thing in the Declaration of Human Rights, where it says everyone has the right to life, liberty and security of person. What is security of person? We know what life is, we know what liberty is. But what is security of person? And I'm going back to this book here, Blackstone Statutes, Criminal Justice Act 1993, Schedule 2 Securities, Shares, Shares and Stock in the Share Capital of the Company. Whoa, 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 what's that? So you go on the internet and you type in securities or security. That's what it will come up with in all the dictionaries, security of stocks and shares. Now we know if you look at dunnandbradstreet.com, not .co.uk, you won't get this information there. dnb.com, and you type in your um, United Kingdom, you'll come up with a number of companies known as United Kingdom. One's United Kingdom Limited, another one's United Kingdom PLC. So you've got shares and so shares and stock in the share capital of the corporation United Kingdom. Ah, birth certificate. You know what birth means? What does certificate mean? It's an instrument, it's proof of ownership of shares. If you look up in the business dictionary, in the legal dictionaries, or any other dictionary. It's proof of shares, that's what it is, proof of shares. Well, you know, the, the guy came a couple of weeks ago, there, a guy, he's sort of, he's more on trust law, which is yeah. similar to all your touch, you know, but yeah. you, you, you spot him right, it's all in the language, and when you analyse it, you, you only find the evidence when you, you only get truth when you do search for the evidence. Well, let me finish, but what do you think? I mean, think about this, yeah. like, what, what he was yeah. saying, it's very logical. Yeah. Why, why, you know, at the end of the day, it's, you bought some, Surely they should be called a law certificate, a live law certificate. Well, they call it a birth certificate. It's maritime. It's maritime. It's called a birth. So basically, it's an analogy with the ER. And who delivers you? A doctor. Which is Admiralty Law, which is what the Admiralty Yeah, a doctor delivers you. 
Dog, dog, bird, bank, bench. Yeah. Um, right, so some people disagree with me on this. Well, what did I do? I went, I will not try this. And I've heard through the likes of Winston Shroud and other people, you know, if you're aware of them, and creditors and commerce and other people, you've got to be very careful with your birth certificate. If you try to cash in on it, you've got to be very, very careful because you can break it. You can zero the account like that. So I, what I did was got my mum's birth certificate and passed away two and a half years ago. And along with it, I didn't realise I had my granddad's birth certificate, my granddad's death certificate, my grandma's birth and death certificate, their marriage certificate, and my mum and dad's marriage certificate. I didn't realise I had them, so I put them all in an envelope and I wrote a letter to George Osborne. <laughs> I endorsed them on the back, as I'm told is what you do, you sign it. You know, um, I endorsed them on the back and said, if you've got any cash value, can I have the money please? Because I am rightful there, sold there to any, um, uh, any monies or shares or capital or whatever it is. Uh, and that was last Saturday. I got a letter this morning, right, and here's what it says. <laughs> Thank you for your letter addressed to George Osborne. He is not able to reply personally to all mail addressed to him. So I have been asked to reply. By the way, this was by recorded delivery. There appears recently to have been a proliferation of correspondence to us concerning bogus side drafts or bills of exchange attempting to claim money from the government and or treasury. These concepts have no basis whatsoever and for the avoidance of doubt the treasury has not and would not accept any such bill of exchange. As far as we can tell, the concept appears, appears to have originated in the US. The US Treasury also refuses to accept any such bill of exchange. They have posted a notice on their website which you might find helpful and there's a website address. We are returning the documents that you sent to us. I need to also be clear that the Treasury will not engage in any further correspondence on this matter. Signed. Al Adams, Correspondence and Information Rights, HM Treasury. You see the significance of that? I sent five or six death, birth, marriage certificates off, saying I believe these to be um, shares in the United Kingdom PLC, right? Um, and a certificate is proof and instrument of shares and that the securities and all the rest of it. And I get a letter back. There appears to have recently been a proliferation of correspondence concerning bogus site drafts or bills of exchange. And by the way, bugger off, we're not speaking to you anymore. I never, I never made a bill of exchange out. I never made a bogus site draft out. And they tell me to go to an American website to look at bills of exchange. Well, as far as I'm concerned, they haven't addressed my question at all. I'm not putting the bogus sign to happen. And if they're saying that the certificate is bogus, why is the Death and Managers Registration Office issuing fake certificates and selling them to me as real? Have we come across, am I rattling a few cages here? Is there something at the hind? Does anybody think that it could be behind anything? No. No. We're just saying as an extra. Hmm? We're just saying as an extra. We keep the originals. You know, you can see the originals or the Dutch ones. I know that. But they're selling us certified copies, which are fake, according to that. And it wasn't a bill of exchange. And it wasn't a side draft. I mean, I've seen side drafts on the internet, they look nothing like uh, a birth certificate. I'm saying it's a certificate of proof of I've got shares in the UK. If they're worth a penny, can I have them penny? 
If they were a really, really quick, can I have them really quick? And they tell me to bugger off, we're not talking about this anymore to you. Go away. Right, so... Uh, could I mention that Derek Ellis was... Uh, I've heard this name four times tonight. <laughs> I've heard this name four times tonight. Yeah, well... <laughs> well, he, he was talking a lot a few weeks ago. He was talking yeah. about non-secateurs. And it appears to me that this is a typical all the time. I mean, we have sent lots of letters to the Treasury and ourselves. And the whole point is they keep on, you know, answering... You know, all sorts of questions. They go out to the question, what Derek Kelly says, you've got to keep on going back, asking this question until you get an answer. Yeah, I'm not stopping here, don't think yeah. I'm going to. So I was, uh, yeah, no, I don't think, I was just waiting that. But, yeah, I'm not, sto I'm not stopping on that one. I mean, that's how I, 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 I didn't put a bloody uh, side draft in or a bit of exchange. But anyway, getting back to uh, where we're nearly finished now. Um, Getting back to what the United Kingdom is, corporation, um, your mum and dad, along with you, if you've got children, signed probably a, a contract without disclosure, full disclosure, you had no idea what you were signing, uh, which you would see appears to be an adhesion contract from birth to grave that you are an employee of the United Kingdom. If you type United Kingdom PLC in on the internet, you get the full seat. I wonder if all those registered companies, ICI, BP, Shell, all the rest of that, are also owned by the United Kingdom PLC. I'm not saying that's the case, I'm saying I'm wondering because they are all registered, aren't they? Like the ones, the Dow Jones in America, are registered with the United States, register, transfer of ownership. That's what it is. Um, so, if we're all employees in these contracts, why don't we stand up and say, I've had enough of this, because this book here gives no man any right whatsoever. The way I look at that is they are terms and conditions of an employee. They are your employee terms and conditions. And if any of you got motor cars out there, you are riding around in company cars. And if any of you got houses out there, you can't board them or whatever, you are in a tired cottage because it's owned by the land registry. So why don't we wake up and say, if that's the case, stick your job. Stick your job. Either we rearrange the terms and conditions of my employment with this organisation, or I'm walking away from it, stick your job. And if all people out there knew, or if I'm right one I'm assuming, and you know, all I'm doing is picking up stuff from, from their books, from their websites and all the rest of it, it that's it appears to me, as so though that's exactly what we are, employees. And because we don't go to the boss and say, you, let's talk about my terms and conditions. If you were working at McDonald's and you got treated the way, you the way this company treats you, would you walk out and get another job? Bloody well, you would. Cameras everywhere, fines for this, fines for that. Do you know you can't even ride your bloody bike down, down the street without breaking the law? A push bike? Push bike is now under the Road Traffic Act. Incredible. A friend of mine got uh, his son got fined easy quickly months ago for, for riding on the pavement as he was trying to get past a bus which is parked right up to, you know where buses park up to the gate, trying to they knock him off his bike so he jumped on the pavement and a couple see him and give him an £80 fine. He must have given the cop his name. Sorry? He must have chosen to give the cop his name. He has to know that, but he doesn't know this. He doesn't know, he doesn't and know that. And that's exactly what will happen. Yeah, but so what we do, I mean, I did say earlier, your name is your enemy, especially when you're acting with these officials. And, uh, um, no, the point I was trying to make was that if, if, say, two or three million people said, I want to renegotiate my contract terms in the UK, yeah. the government would take notice and the Crown would take notice. Absolutely, they would. But if, you know, how many people, how, how many people in groups up and down the country or groups up and down the world? like this, like New Horizons, like Truth Juice, like 
uh, meets the uh, we all change meet up and all this. How many groups out there? Oh, when I say groups, I don't mean groups. I mean meets because we are not terrorists in any way whatsoever. What we're trying to do is get fairness for people to take the pressure off everybody to take all, take away all these chemtrails, all these flaming cameras, all, all these digital microchips that we're all going to have if they get their way. Um, um, and, and all the other things that other people talk about, like third world wars and, and mass um, gatherings of people to put in into uh, these fever camps and such. I mean, you've all seen the coffins already for us and all this sort of stuff. You know, it's time, it's time that we all started talking about this to our neighbours, to our friends, to our family, and saying, if you don't like the terms and conditions of employment, tell them to stuff it. So you are, there's your bloody person. You have it, I don't want it anymore. I'll interact with my own people. And that's, that's all about all I've got to say. Um, where are FEMA camps in this country? Peterborough. Where? Woods in Peterborough. Where? Peterborough. Peterborough, two big uh, Air Force bases in Peterborough, but yeah. FEMA camps, in fact. Uh, yeah. uh, but FEMA is an American organization. Has anybody heard Bill Cooper? Yeah. yeah. Please download Bill Cooper's stuff. Yeah, but I like uh, Yeah. He's done 80-odd hours of broadcast uh, back in the 90s. Right, so he told you all about what's coming now, what, what, what's here now, who's doing it, why they're doing it, who they are, and what the, what, you know, the, 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 the motivations behind it. It's all religion. Do you know what gets me, though? I mean, I've been like, absolutely disgusted at this hill's I've been in tears and I can't believe if people can't wake up at that, what the fuck, sorry, can we wake up at? Well, because if people are on the streets now, I don't absolutely, I'm sorry about the language folks, but yeah. if sending your birth certificate off, if people dying in front of your eyes on television screen and then finding out that the police lied and made them into the bad people, if that isn't going to wait for a call, I have your own how is on this? <laughs> I've got your own opinion on the husband. Well, I, yeah, and it ain't what you think it was. If that isn't going to wait for people, what well, is this? We know this, we, we know this corruption. We know it hasn't touched yeah. their lives. We know, our, go we know our governments are corrupt. We know every Prime Minister and every Cabinet Minister has known about the Hillsborough incident since Margaret Thatcher. Right? So they should be done under private prosecutions. Every Chief of Police knows about it. Right? So why aren't they brought in front of the courts? You know, of courts, when I say courts, yeah, let them go in the bloody star chambers. Like the way ordinary people, the ordinary people in the, in the streets, everybody's terrified of these people. They're, all, they're, they're just like you and me, but they're a bit more evil than you and me. And they don't give a damn about you. And they've already predetermined what they're going to do to you before they even walk in those courts. <coughs> Unless you know them. Or you've got an idea how to stand up for yourself. I'm back, in, I'm back up against, against these vultures again next Tuesday. I don't know what's going to happen. I've no idea what's going to happen, but I'm not going to stand there and defend myself and know that I am not that bloody piece of ink that they've got on a piece of paper. I'm far more than that, right? And because I went, I allegedly, because I allegedly went eight miles an hour over a speed limit in the mountains in North Wales, where nobody was about, and one of these dickheads with a camera like that, collecting money, so that these bastards can go and bomb people in Iraq, Afghanistan, destroy families, destroy the infrastructure of these countries, put these countries on their knees, and then send their own boys in the Halibirds to go and rebuild it all, so that they can you know, money. I mean, I only know more way. I only come across this information six years ago. I know. All these masons, not the vast majority of these masons are after a new world order, which is the total enslavement of everyone. The whole globe, they will get shot at the people who aren't useful to them. 
and the new generation are going to be that thing, that program with television, bloody circuses like the X Factor, programs like Coronation Street and, and being fed crap on the news like, did you know that the bloody world the uh, Conquer Championship had to be cancelled last week. You know, instead of being educated, the schools don't educate people. Bloody hell, I've learned more in the last three months than I've ever learned in the whole of my time at school. They feel there's lies about the history, lies about geography. The only thing that they teach you is just enough so that you can do their jobs that they want you to do. They don't teach you any more unless you go into their bloody secret societies and go up the degrees and when you get to a certain degree, 30th degree, then they tell you the truth. These people are magicians, they are manipulators of energy, they are manipulators of mankind, right? They're, 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 killing, they're killing people with cancers, with, with, with uh, the food that we eat, everybody knows the food that we eat is shit. Pardon the French, I'm sorry if I'm offending you, but it's all shit. Christ, I remember reading a book in 1971 called The Doomsday Book by Gordon Rattray Taylor. And it was the only book I'd ever bloody read right the way through. And I didn't read again until just recently. Right? And this book told me exactly what was going to happen by the year 2000. And when I found a copy of it on the internet about five years ago and I read it and everything in it was right. Talking about chemtrails, talking about manipulating the weather, talking about putting a, a hole in the ozone, talking about the food that we're going to be eating this crap. But all the cities are cramped tight with people, the reason being because that will cause a state of stress, which causes a state of illness, which brings about cancer and kills them off naturally. Well, not naturally, but kills them off. And if it doesn't, cancer doesn't kill them, they'll kill each other because they're too close together. Every, every house that we live in is the same flame and size living room. It doesn't matter how much you spent out for it, whether it be a hundred thousand or five hundred thousand, your living room is probably five before. Why? And you're supposed to have a family living room because it's put the family under stress. You've got no space to move around. All these things they're ingenious in what they've done. Every part of your life has been invaded by these people, whoever they are. Whoever they are. And, and you know, all these Freemasons, third degree, four, I'm a third degree, they haven't got a clue what they're doing. They're just as stupid as, as the rest of them, but the people at the top, the George Bushes, the Tony Blairs, you've got the Brown, and this cat, bloody clown, that's it now, Cabbage Patch Kid. <laughs> well, he is, I mean, he does look like a cat. You know, and he's laughing, and he's using language to you that you don't understand what he's saying. They're putting spells on you. I was up in court a couple of weeks ago with a judge, a district judge in Canaan Court. Guess what he was doing in court? Are you with the. Uh, not that I'm taking the. Are you with the. Uh, get out of my court, you've got no business here. That's what he was doing. Why was he doing that? Anybody have any idea? Well, I found out why. He was carrying out a spell on me. A magic spell, that's what he was doing. It was a ritual. It was a Masonic ritual. Can I ask you, you saw me join in with that spontaneous applause. I agree with every word of you. Why are you wasting your abilities messing about with these idiots? Pretending not to be... Hang on, sir. If I wasn't messing about with these magicians, with these spell wonders, whatever you want to call them, if I wasn't messing around with them, I wouldn't be getting the education and the knowledge that get that without, without no, you can't. You can't. What? Listen, knowledge is gained through experience. It's not gained through hearsay. You've got to experience what's going on. You've got to see what goes on in these courts. You've got to see. Right, the likes of a magistrate's court uh, going back last year in, in, in uh, Liverpool, where Scottish power. Uh, is this going on? <laughs> Scottish power. <laughs> Scottish writer of Freemasonry, Scottish power, my ass. Scottish power applied for a warrant of entry to get into my home to, to inspect the metering equipment. I have no metering equipment in my home. And they were using the 1954 app, rights of entry, 
of the electricity, electricity and gas board, that's a word you want to look up, board. It doesn't mean what you think it does. I'll give you the legal definition now. Board, legally, in Black's, I think it's Black's Law Second, board means a group of clergymen meeting in a private place to administer a fiduciary trust on behalf of a missing person. That's what a board is. So you've got a school board, the electric board, the gas board, the board's board, this board, that board, board of inquiry. They are administering your trusts, which goes back to your trust law you were talking about and bumps into that. That's what they're doing. They're not telling you that you've got a trust. They never tell you that this person's in my way. <laughs> this is all yours, but you can't bloody have it because we're administering it secretly. And anybody finds out about it, oh. These bloody people need. Well, we know what they need, but it's time for people to stand up and do something. Yes. Speak out, tell your friends, tell your family, and get something done. Because if we don't do something about it, ten years, five years down the line, we will not be able to do anything about it. I mean, we've got 2012, the Mayan calendar, uh, time of change, and it's all going to be wonderful. Unless we do something about it, it's going to carry on the same old show through stages. The, what I've found in this, when you start looking at the esoteric, which is the hidden, the occult, which is stuff, oh no, you go over there, you can't know about that. But when you start looking into the hidden things and what these secret people are doing behind the scenes, right, and seeing the devastation of man, you seeing the stress of everybody, um, everybody's losing their jobs, the price of petrol's going up by the minute, food's going, the crap they're putting in anyway. Um, uh, the likes of um, mammography and what's that, yeah, that, what that's doing to women's breasts. I mean, I don't know whether you uh, uh, Was anybody here for Phil's talk in the week on, on mammography? Oh. You missed it. Whoever, women should, you should know this. You should look at what men, yeah. 2,000 x rays per breast when you go on that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wanted to mention that. Yeah. 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 I want to mention that. She's in court in Manchester this week, Dr. Sarah Mile. Right, you'll see her on the internet. Um, the sign is shut it down. Um, she's gonna make she's gonna make a laughing stock of them with the, the evidence she's got. So uh, she is looking for some support if anybody just wants to go along and sit there and listen to what she has to say because she's gonna make a total mock of them. Um, I, I wanted to give that a plug. And an Rob's meeting I want to give a plug. Ago in the FMRJ. Yeah. Well, Rob's, Rob Rob does a talk. BMJ. Rob does speak as guest speakers on every week in Ashton Meetup. You want to get there. Um, he's about solutions, right? And he's gone really down the rabbit hole as far as council tax and concern. I wanted to mention that. Can I mention that, Rob? Um, Thanks to Rob here and all this research and, and challenging our councils about what council tax is about, should I pay it, is it legal, is it lawful? He's found out that Wigan Council is not Wigan Metropolitan Board of Council, it's a different entity, two of them a different company. One of them, Wigan Metropolitan Board of Council, has the Royal Charter for the, the billing rights and set, uh, Wigan Council doesn't. Wigan Council is not our... Um, I uh, should make a complaint to Wigan NBC so that they can send out a summons or whatever. So anyway, but basically what he's uncovered is that when you go to the court in Wigan, and it's probably the same here, and I know it's the same in Stephen in Liverpool, right? When you go to court, the council itself issues the liability order, has got a rubber stamp of the Justice's clerk in their office, Right? They are basically the judge, jury and executioner. So you've got no chance. It doesn't matter what excuse you've got or what questions you've got about it. You're going to get done with a liability order. Now, um, with the Bangalore principles that Rob's um, brought my attention to, is all judges and magistrates and court clerks have to have transparency, impartiality, integrity and all the rest of it. And there's one sentence at the end of the document which was released and delivered to all Justices Clark through the Justices Clark Society, which has been gone since 1863. 
one sentence at the end of this, I can't remember the whole thing because it's three pages long, but one sentence says, at no point in the proceedings must the general public find out that the council are running the whole show. Now Rob put that up and within four hours of been putting it up on the internet, the Justice of Clark Society website went down and it's still down. Well, they dissolved themselves. They dissolved themselves. They, dissolve themselves. they no longer exist. So I think a big hand should be given to me. That man is missing the doctor from bloody hell to uncover that. Now, there are also other moves getting made very soon, I can't say nothing about it, um, which will be challenging things in a bigger way. Uh, I hope and I trust that these so-called author of the writs authorities don't get a sniff of what it is because when it does happen, by God, they're going to get a bloody shock on themselves. So it'll send shockwaves right through the country. Am I right? Legally and lawfully. Legally and lawfully, yeah. So it's with the likes of Rob's, Rob's experience. He's gained his knowledge through his experience. Knowledge can't be met, you've got to experience it. You've got to stand up against them, that's saying enough is enough. I myself have been without electricity for quite some time now because of Scottish power. I read about Scottish power and they're fracking and up the road there and I thought, well that's it, I'm having nothing to do with them anymore. And I told them to take the meters away and stick them up the arse and if you don't take them away in a full, in a full life, I'll be charging them a hundred pound per week per meter. Now they're coming heavy with me again, asking me for fifteen hundred quid. Well you can go swing the bloody hook. They're not getting anything off me. Scottish Power to me is a criminal organisation and I don't mind saying that because it's my bloody opinion. Yeah. You have a right to live on the paradigm of war and be peace and Thank you very much, Chris.